Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? I can hear right. you perfectly well. Good. So we can hear you and see you. So um, um, on behalf of Macmillan Education, it's my great privilege and honor um, to introduce um, uh, Lorena to you. Um, Lorena studied pedagogy in Mexico City, became an English teacher a few years ago, specializing in early childhood uh, stimulation, learning disabilities, psychomotor skills, and logical mathematical thinking, and um, as well as uh, teaching, has, has trained many teachers, coaches, teachers, and has also written in collaboration with uh, Macmillan as well. And so um, I'm very lucky in my job. I get to meet lots of nice uh, teachers and lots of nice authors, and it's been a great pleasure for me to meet and get to know Lorena uh, this year. And I'm sure you're all desperate to hear her tips on how to improve your pre-primary classroom management. So Lorena, over to you. Oh, thank you so much, Mike. Well, hello, everybody. It's really an honor to be here with you today. And so hello from everybody around the world. Um, well, I hope that by the end of this seminar, you get to get some really useful tips that you can start applying directly into your classroom. So, well, let's get started. So, um, I chose this quote, the greatest sign of success for a teacher is to be able to say the children are working as if I did not exist. So little by little, during this uh, time that we're going to be sharing together, I'm going to be giving you some tips so you can really get to do this. Um, that, that you feel comfortable in your classroom, that you um, feel happy and that you have fun in your classroom, and, and that you can also have everything under control. Okay? So the first thing uh, I want to ask you is, what did you know about classroom management? And uh, what uh, do you want to know? Uh, there are going to be some questions that I am going to be able to answer at the end of the seminar. So uh, please free, feel free to ask. And I hope to be answering some of your questions during this time. Um, but if you still have some questions, please feel free to um, write them down so I can ask them, um, I mean, I can answer them at the end of the sentence. Okay, so um, I chose seven specific things I wanted to share with you today. So um, uh, you, can, you can get special tips from each of uh, these points that you can start applying. So the first thing is, oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for answering. Okay. Man managing with kids. Okay. Okay. I hope that you can um, be able to answer them. Okay. So, the first thing that you have to do is to get to know your children. You know, um, for some of your children at the beginning of the school year, it's going to be their first time going to school. So the first thing that you have to do is to find out who they are, to find out um, their age, to find out what they like, what they don't, how they learn, and some special considerations. Because the first thing that you have to do is to gain their confidence. Uh, if you don't have the confidence of your little kids, then um, it's going to be very difficult to teach them. So one of the things that you can do to gain their confidence is using a puppet. So um, I have here a little friend I want to introduce to you. So if you say, hello, Bob. And here I have, hello, everybody. This is my little friend, Bob. And Bob is 
is very glad to be here, right, Bob? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, using this kind of puppet um, is very useful because um, imagine that you're a little kid, that you work with your mom, and some, some, uh, all of a sudden, you're dropping to school with a very nice teacher that speaks a different language, and it's super scary. Imagine you're a little kid with, in, in, in this school, a lot of kids with a lot of new people. It super still makes them feel that they're going to be safe. And this kind of thing, having them in the classroom, um, it are very useful. So use a puppet. Uh, I, they, they are um, they are very cute, and um, I'm gonna tell you an experience that I had a long time ago. I used to have a, a a little girl when I was teaching nursery, three year old kid, and when I received her, I was very nice. I was speaking very sweetly and everything. But <laughs> Uh, she was never talking to me. Uh, she 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 would never answer. She would never say hello back to me. Nothing. So one day I brought a puppet, and I started greeting her with a puppet like this one. So when I started using the puppet, she that she was really learning English, but she was never talking to me. She was talking to the puppet. So she felt confident with the puppet. And little by little, I started ga gaining her confidence using the puppet. So um, there was one moment that, that she accepted me as her teacher, okay? So it's super important to gain their confidence from the very beginning. And it's not the same to teach little kids uh, from three year years old than to teach old kids like the ones that are going to elementary school that are in the last year of preschool because they already know what it, it is to go to school so get to know your students i uh, tell you again know what their age what they like and they dislike what kind of cartoons they like like go in their world um do some research about uh what are the things that uh they're into what type of toys they use um, so you can use all that information even to decorate their classroom or to receive them in your classroom. How they learn. Um, sometimes um, we have to plan our activities and we have to know how they learn just because we need to see if the activities that we're planning are suitable for our kids. So we also have to find out our kids how they learn. And special considerations, if for example they have any allergies. Because, for example, if we are planning to uh, do some activities, including flower, but some students are allergic to wheat, then we have to think about other things to do with our students. So um, getting to know our children is also uh, telling them in a way, you know, I care about you and I love you. And if children feel love, then they are going to, they are going to learn. Okay? So first thing, gain their confidence. The second, the, sec, the second thing is organize your classroom. This is super important for classroom management because um, it's going to uh, give you uh, like the, the tool to uh, make everything work smoothly, okay? So here are some tips. Um, the clue here is let them be independent. Sometimes as uh, preschool teachers, uh, we think that since they are little kids, we have to do everything for them. But you know something? We have to let them do things. We have to let them uh, think that they are already grown up and that um, they, they can do also things in the classroom, and that is going to help you too to save some time, okay? So let them be independent. And uh, how can we organize our classroom? First, 
we have to create specific places. So um, think about your classroom and think if it's possible to have a place where you can work in a circle. Uh, it's um, very useful, for example, when you get to receive your students and you sit in a circle with them and you start your class or day, daily routine in a circle because you, you, you have them near you and you can contain them. And there, when you start uh, doing your daily routines, you can use your puppet to greet everybody. You can sing some songs. You can go through weather and everything, but in the circle. You can now also teach some uh, vocabulary words in the circle. So if possible, plan a, sp a, special, uh, a special place to work in a circle. Also, um, plan a special place where uh, children can work in teams, where um, you're going to uh, ask them to do certain activities that everybody can do, or you can work in stations. I'm going to talk about that um, a little bit afterwards. Um, also a place uh, to display children's work. Children love to have uh, their work displayed on the walls and they feel really very proud uh, of what they're doing. So think about that. A place to display flashcards. Um, it, is, it, it is very useful if you put the, the vocabulary flashcards that you're using because they can be looking at them all the time and um, they can uh, remember them. To keep material within or without the reach of children. There are going to be certain materials that you would like children to, to, to have near them. I'm going to explain you that in a moment. And certain materials that you will not want them to, to, to be uh, near them, such as scissors, for example. No? So uh, plan a special place where you can put those things. And um, a special place to display specific charts or posters for your class, for example, if you use posters for uh, a calendar, for weather, days of the week. Okay, so, so plan your spaces in your classroom. And in the places where you're planning to keep your material, it's very useful to label um, the shelf or the tray with words or pictures so your students know uh, where, where things go. So they can help you collect and then put everything back in the correct place so they can help you keep your classroom in order and organize. And also, you can label some trays um, with, um, uh, by teams. So uh, the, other, the other thing is organize children by teams. Uh, you can name your teams by colors, by numbers, by shape. And you can put um, small shoe boxes, boxes, uh, that you can decorate. I have a picture, uh, an idea here, for example. This can be a shoebox, okay? And you can decorate it with uh, any paper you like, or even you can ask your parents to bring a shoebox, decorate it uh, however their kids want. <clears throat> and you can then use those boxes for many things in your classroom. They will help you organize your classroom a lot. So, well, I have an idea here. For example, you plan uh, to organize your children by team. So you're going to have a box and you're going to name that team purple. Or you can um, organize them by numbers and you put the numbers. So you're going to be team purple or team number one. And for example, for grown-ups, you can also do this. You can name students um, with, um, with shapes, team triangle. And if they are about to go to elementary school, you may want to also write the, the names here, okay? We can say triangle. So they can start making the association between the word and the picture, okay? So in these kind of boxes, two boxes, you can put all the materials that children are going to be needing. And um, that is going to be very useful because if you organize children by teams, you can also get to have your captain. So, uh, each team is going to have a captain, and the captain is going to be the only one who's going to be standing up to get the box with all the materials that children are going to be needing for that day, for that activity, and they're going to put the box in the middle of the table, and then they are going to take out all the material, and that's going to help to save time. Sometimes, um, 
uh, we we lose control and I'm going to be talking about that in a, in in a moment sometimes we lose control of our class because we are the ones who want to give out everything so um, we are uh, giving out the crayons we are giving out the um, stencils and um, if we go by one by one then we lose time and Children, then they, they get the material and then they start playing with it or they don't know what to do. So it's better if you have less children standing up, getting the materials, putting it in the middle of the table and taking it out so everybody can start working. Okay? So, um, for example, in the tray, I plan an activity. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, scissors, I'm going to be using papers, I'm going to be using glue to put everything there. I'm going to uh, give an example of that in, in a moment. Okay, so organizing by team. And um, if possible, in, in your list of materials, ask your parents to bring you a shoebox or two, um, decorate it, or maybe you want to decorate them, um, so that you can receive them at the beginning of the class. Okay, so it's super important. If you organize your classroom, uh, it will help you a lot, a lot with classroom management. Another thing is to plan ahead. It's super, oh, I, I'm sorry. I somehow do you do you see me again? Um, it's super important to plan ahead because that way. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, to plan ahead what we're going to be doing. And this is uh, another, another clue for a good classroom management. So the clue here is, okay, I'm going to be planning my activities, but keep your objective in mind. Because sometimes we plan very nice activities, but we do not have a clear objective. So at the end of, of the class, Uh, children got to do a lot of activities, but the, the objective was not clear, so you, you cannot really tell what they learn. So keep their objective in mind, okay? I'm going to, to give an example in a minute. And tip, okay, I'm planning an, an activity. So after writing, so I want my children to review the word flower, and so I want my kids to um, paint a flower, okay? So I'm going to imagine all my class. How am I going to do it, okay? I, I, what do I need? Hmm? So I can detect problems and solve them before going to the classroom. If we plan and we imagine, then we can solve them better and we can be ready when we are in the classroom. What happens uh, when, when we plan, but we didn't imagine um, any problem that can happen? That, for example, uh, I plan a very nice activity using watercolors, but I forget the water. So then I tell my students, oh my God, I forget. Um, sometimes, because that happened to me a, lot, <laughs> a long time ago, we say, okay, hold on, stay there, sit down. Don't get out and, and please behave. Or maybe you're saying, oh, fulanito, please, uh, please check on them. While I rush out of the classroom, I go to the bathroom and get some water because I need it for the activity. So uh, that is very risky because, first of all, you cannot leave your children alone because uh, there can be a lot of accidents. And um, second of all, when you come back, every, everything can be a mess. And it will take you a lot to um, to put them in order again. And it, it will take you so much time that when you start your activity, maybe the, 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 the time for your class is going to be over. So if you imagine all of the things that you need beforehand, then you are going to, to have everything solved. So when planning your activities, first of all, you have to think, who? Who are you going to be doing that activity for? My kids are three years old. My kids are five years old. No? What? What am I going to be doing? I'm going to give you an example. I have it here. 
Okay. So I want to um, review the word flower with my little kids. Okay. So I want them to paint a flower. So who am I going to gi be giving this to? To kids that are three years old or to kids that are five years old? Okay. So I make. I make the activity before so I can count the time and I more or less can see if, um, if how much time they will take and if the activity is suitable for them. And also because if I show them what I expect them to do, then it will be easier for them to know what um, I want them from them. Uh, can you hear me somehow? Okay. So maybe they are not going to understand everything I say in English, but if I show them what they are going to be doing, just by looking at what they are going to be doing, then they can really know what, um, what is the objective and what you want them to do. So show them a model, if possible, of the finished project so they know what they're going to be doing, okay? And um, so in my box, I say, okay, I want them to do this flower. So I will need my stencil, okay? Maybe um, for little kids, I'm going to give you them a stencil. And um, maybe the grown-ups can draw their own flower, okay? But So I put my stencil, then I'm going to put my watercolors. But, oh, my little kids, my three-year-old kids, um, have a problem because they have not developed the, the pencil grip, okay? So it's going to be very difficult for them to do this because they are going to do this, okay? So maybe it's going to be hard for them to use a paintbrush. So with my three-year-old, I'm ask, going to ask them to do it with their finger, okay? They're going to be painting with their finger. So maybe my five-year-old will be able to use the paintbrush, okay? So then I have to think, who am I going to do to be given this, okay? So then I put everything that I will need in my box, okay? And then I say, oh, I might also want to need a, a small container to put water because they're going to be using watercolors. So um, you can also ask parents to donate these types of uh, leads, okay? They all have them at home. Um, or bottle caps, you can also have bottle caps, okay? And that's it. Oh no, I'm missing water, but I cannot put water in the box. And I, I don't want them to have the water because um, I don't want them to, to spill it. I don't want any accident. So I think, how am I going to do this? Oh, I have to bring the water and have to but I don't want to lose a lot of time going, um, how am I going to do it? Okay then, if you, if you detect a problem, how am I going to pull water? Then, for example, I suggest you use a bottle like this because it's very easy. You just uh, pull the lid, the, um, the lid okay, in, in, the, in the small container and then your kids can start uh, uh, working, no? So um, it, uh, the, the idea here is, what, what, what is your objective? My objective is for them to review flower. How am I going to do it? Well, I want them to paint a water, uh, um, something with a watercolor. Or you can paint something with colors. Or you're going to give them clay because you're going to be modeling a flower. You just have to plan your activity, OK? and detect problems. Then how am I going to collect water? Then you can bring a small bucket and uh, to the classroom and you can go around pouring the water they use. Obviously, they're not going to um, put water up to here, but up to here, okay? Just to prevent any spill. So think of all the problems you, you can have with the activities that you're planning. Think if the activity is suitable for your children and um, think how, how you're going to do it. 
uh, where you're going to do it, if you're going to do it in your classroom or do you want to do it outside, uh, when, the time, uh, if you're going to do it before recess or after recess. Maybe you think, oh, maybe after recess because uh, they come very hyper. So if I play some music and I get them to color, then they're going to, to feel relaxed, no? With what, with what materials? And why, what's my objective? And always when you're planning, always have plan B. Extra activities for fast finishers. I'm going to point that out in a few moments, but it's super important to have plan B. Because if you don't have plan B, then uh, you can also um, lose control of your class because you, you will not have anything, uh, any, any other activity for the ones who have already finished. So if they have nothing to do, they will find out what to do. And you will not like, to, you will not like that, okay? So. So by now, um, the, the important things are get to know your students, gain their confidence, um, plan ahead, and obviously when planning, you have to think of your routines and your rules. And it, they are super, super important to have a good classroom management. So what is the clue here? Routines help children feel safe because they know what's next. So um, if you set your routines, this is the way we always um, collect material. This is the way we always line up. This is the way we always uh, do, um, I don't know, the daily routine. This is the way we always have lunch. So set your routines from the very beginning. It's, it's going to take you time from the beginning, but believe me, if you do this after the first month, then your class is going to work super because your children will know already what to expect in your, in your class. Uh, uh, an example of a routine, a long time ago, uh, I was a coordinator in a school and I got to substitute teachers a lot. So it was really very funny and, uh, and, and very good too, uh, to go in the classroom and I, uh, and I just to bring the lesson plan of the teacher with me. But, there was always a kid who, could, who, who would come and tell me, you know something, the teacher does this, 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 and that for the daily routine. And she keeps things there. And she, she does this like this. So, because they already knew the routine. So it was really very useful to go in the classroom because there was always going to be someone who would explain me how the teacher did things so I could follow up. So if you set your routines, children will know what to do. And the tip here is set routines and rules from the very beginning. Having control of the class means children are learning. If you don't have control of your class, then you're not really sure if you're learning or not. So at the beginning of the class, set routines. Set routines for daily routine, uh, set routines, as I told you, I mean, to put, their lunch boxes and their school bags, where you want, who are going to do that, everybody or who. So think of also of routines that can help you save time, okay? So how are you going to do that? Maybe everybody's going to get in your classroom, they're all going to see, and you're going to be asking team by team to stand up and put everything uh, in the correct place. Um, think of ideas where you can save time and it, it doesn't look so disorganized. Think of uh, routines for in the middle of the class. So uh, in the middle of the class can be, for example, routines um, to, 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 as I was telling you, to collect material or even to clean up. Uh, maybe in the middle of the classroom, you're going to set the time, time is over and uh, you, you put it in your cell phone, your time, and then uh, just start singing with your little friend. And then he starts, no? Like, clean up, clean up, everybody, everywhere. Okay? Just start singing with your, with your, um, with your puppet. And 
kids are already going to know that it's time to put everything away. So set your routine. You can also do this by playing certain music or, I mean, or by singing a bell. I mean, you're going to decide how you're going to do this, but set your routine. And at the end of the class, how are you going to, 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 to do it at the end of the class? Maybe um, you're going to use a wipey to clean their faces. Um, you're going to, to ask them to sit down properly so they can go and get their lunch boxes to line up. How are you going to do it at the end of the class? So when planning, um, in, be sure to, in, as well as your activities, but also your routine so you don't forget them, okay? And well, obviously, uh, obviously rule um, uh, what you expect them from them, no? Um, Sometimes uh, we, we like to put uh, charts that say, these are the rules of the classroom. But little kids don't understand words and they can understand pictures, but maybe you can also use the puppet to uh, explain rules. Maybe the puppet can misbehave and you can tell the puppet, oh no, no, Bob, don't do that. We don't push. No, no, no. Okay, so um, you can also use your puppet to explain rules to children, and they will understand with a puppet. Maybe later, you can show up picture with a rule, and you will tell, oh, Bob, we don't push. Look, we don't push, right, kids? We don't push. And you can then put your pictures of the rules somewhere uh, in the classroom where they can see them, okay? But it is important to model them so they can really understand. Uh, what you expect from them, okay? In the classroom as behavior. Okay. And well, now we gain confidence, uh, we're planning ahead, we're setting routines in our lesson plan. And well, we also have to be aware of the time. And I think that this is like the most important part of the webinar, time. If we have control of the time, then that means that our class is going to be successful. So the clue here is short and snappy activities. Um, and the tip is use a chronometer or bell to set a specific time for each activity. So short and snappy activities. Um, Children, uh, they get tired if, if they are doing um, one thing for a long time. Sometimes when they are um, in the classroom. So um, you have to, to make them short because their span of attention is not that long. So for example, uh, the span of attention, it is said that it is more or less one minute per year of age. So if you have three years old, then maybe the span of attention that they will have is like around five minutes. So it is super important that um, your activities are short and snappy. So with that small activity, children uh, get to, to reach the objective that you have. Okay, so again, keep your objective in mind. What is my objective and how am I going to do to do it, to, to get my students get to the objective, but um, with a very short and easy activity. Keep in mind the time of the day too. It is super important because sometimes kids are super tired and um, you, you, you need to think if, if that activity is going to be suitable, if they are super tired or sometimes, um, the kids are very hyper, so you have to think if, if it's okay to give the, the kids that certain activity, or maybe you have to change the activity. So keep in mind the time of the day. As I told you, prepare your material beforehand, so uh, you don't lose time giving out material. Another thing um, where we lose time that I didn't tell you before is when we want to give out books. So I have another um, idea for you here. You can also have your books, your children's books, in your boxes. Oh. 
in your boxes, okay, for the team. And um, because sometimes we are like, we, 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 we open the book in the page where we want our kids to work with, and then we're calling the name of each kid and maybe we're giving them out, or maybe we're carrying the books and we're walking around and we're giving out books. The problem is that little kids say, what behind is nicer and they start looking at the other pages so we lose time giving out books and we also lose time going back again to see if everybody's in the correct page before we start the activity so you can use one of these clips to put in the book and so i mean it is not easy for them to turn it uh to turn the page over and you can put here in the clip a little sticker they choose so they recognize which is their book, or you can also put the name here, okay? So um, keep it, keep, um, prepare your materials beforehand so you don't lose time. You don't lose time giving out materials. And um, plan activities children can do independently or in a small group, um, or set up stations for different activities, for example, I want students to learn numbers. So children can do independently um, in, 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 in different uh, group activities, like um, you give them uh, cards with numbers, and then they have them together, all the kids together, all the trees together. Or in another um, group, you're going to give them um, clay and you're going to give them a card and they have to form the number on top of the card with clay. Those activities, they can do them by themselves. You don't have to be like there uh, checking on them, but maybe there's going to be one activity where you have to sit just to check that they are really getting to the objective. Maybe um, you're going to sit with there checking that they are putting the number from one to four in the correct order. So you're going to be there and you're going to pay a little bit more of attention to that group that is doing that activity because your objective for that day was to reveal numbers and to put them in order from one to four, from one to five. So um, the other kids are busy. They are getting to the objective by themselves because they're going to be sorting numbers um, or, or modeling the, the numbers. Obviously, you're going to keep an eye on them, but uh, you can you can plan this kind of activities that they can do independently and in, or in stations no or um after some time you ring the bell after five minutes of sorting numbers or 10 minutes you, you ring the bell and they change and then they do the next activity and super important let children help you because if, if you let them help you First of all, they will feel very motivated because they always want to be the helper or to play to be the teacher. And um, that will also help you save time. For example, um, if you want to do an art activity and you want to put them um, some art items, you always lose a lot of time putting them on. But if you uh, put the art aprons in a box and you ask them to take them out, uh, one can button, for example, the apron of the one that is in front, and the one that is behind can button the, the, the apron of the one that is in the middle. So there's your saving time, and uh, you're helping them to uh, learn how to make a knot or uh, to, to, to work with their fine model skills, and that saves time. Obviously, you can help the ones that, that will need help, but it will save more time if, if they if they help you do this, that if you do it. So time is a clue. Time is a clue so you don't lose control of the group. But if you lose control of the group somehow or for any reason, just keep calm. And remember that I have to keep them busy or I have to change the activity. So keep calm and keep them busy. If children don't have anything to do, they will find what to do. And the tip here is always have extra activities for fast finishers. So 
what are the the common problems that we have the time of the activity was too long and children finished before so maybe i thought that they were going to finish an activity in 10 minutes but oh no uh, they finished before so I'm, what am i going to do i don't have any other activity so the moment that you're thinking what to do and you organize your idea then they are going to um to find what, what to do maybe they're going to start bothering the one that is next to them or they're going to start talking or jumping or standing up so you can lose control of of, of your class with that so if if the activity was um uh, if i thought that the time of the activity was okay but the children finished before okay you just pick up everything and then you take out your your next activity or the activity that you have plan for plan uh, for in your plan b or you can also have for example for fast finishers another box with a label that that says here fast finishers or with a star or something that um children know that they can get some material from that so for fast uh, if children uh, finish quickly you can tell them oh go and get something from from the or from the magic box sorry i don't know from from the from the star box or the magic box or the fast finisher box and there you can get have like small um stories for them to look at you can have clay you can have um i don't know uh beads and needles so they can um do something as a necklace or something with that i mean you can have different activities so they are busy they are something uh, they are doing something and they're entertained in a way until the other ones finish. Obviously, don't don't wait too long um, to, to wait for the, or everybody to finish. Okay, just um, keep your time. Keep your time. Um, the the time that you that you plan. Keep keep it as much as possible, and try to 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 have activities for the other ones that finish before. Another problem, the time of the activity was too short and nobody finished and so you need more time. So here, you, you might start getting nervous because, oh no, they have not finished this activity and I have planned other activities. Okay, so don't worry. You just have to say, okay, I'm just going to move this activity for tomorrow. Maybe you will have to make some adjustments after your class is over to, to see what are you going to do, okay? So, um, so, so just keep calm because sometimes if you get nervous and you start saying, oh no, so you start hurrying up, maybe you, 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 you start telling them, oh, hurry up, hurry up. And they're going to get nervous too. So what, what happens when they get nervous? They, they may start um, standing up. Maybe they, they're going to stop doing the activity. Maybe they're going to, um, say oh no i'm never going to finish this so they will lose uh interest in the activity so don't worry don't worry if if um if nobody finish or you give them more time or you just stop the activity the time of the activity was just right but for most of the children but some finished before again have have them do something um, the activity was too challenging, children lost interest, or the activity was too easy, children finished quickly. So always find things children can do. I didn't plan anything, don't worry. Ask them to stand up, and maybe you can start singing a song where uh, they can dance, they can, um, you can review some action verbs, okay? So, okay, everybody stand up, put everything away, stand up and walking walking everybody's walking and then you start singing or you play some music and you you play a game maybe you you say okay if um if i um play some music you are going to 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 walk no to 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 the rhythm if i um uh stop the music you're going to stop and then um get to do something else 
you, you, you keep them entertained while you are thinking what you're going to do next, okay? But you're not losing the control of your class. So that's why here I wrote, don't forget to have variety. Sometimes um, we think that having a good classroom management means that our kids are all in their places, under control, in silence, working, but that's not the truth. A good classroom management is children who are doing what, what you want them to do, that are signing up but in, in a control way or are sitting down but in a control way. What do I mean? Children will learn with their body. So if you maintain kids sitting in their chairs all the time, they're going to get tired, they're going to start moving, they are going to uh, lose interest in the activity and then they can start disturbing the, the class. So you have to uh, sense your class. So the, the tip here is just keep your activities in between activities to help them release energy and gain their attention again. For example, if you feel that um, your children are too restless, they, they don't longer uh, want to do the activity, they are already too tired, Maybe, for example, this happens when we are teaching vocabulary, we're showing vocabulary. If, um, if we want them to learn 10 vocabulary words, it's going to be very tired for them because we are, okay, what is it? Flower, repeat, flower. Okay, fulanito, flower. So, um, and if you do this 10 times and then you go backwards, okay, and for example, Hmm. What is it? Crayon. Is it a flower? No, it's a crayon. So if you do that with 10 flashcards, oh my God. I mean, they're, they're going to feel very restless. So, so maybe just do three or five flashcards and then the, the next day you're going to do other three, three or five. The, the, the clue here is uh, since, since um, your class, if they're getting too tired, to uh, activate them again. If they are too active, then, then you will have to um, uh, relax them again, okay? So think of activities in which your children can sing, play, sit down to do some work, then stand up again to dance and release their energy. There are moments where they're going to be um, singing and dancing, then they sit down and work. Then they stand up again in between activities um, and do something, a keeper activity, and then they sit down again. Okay, so that's right, it's total physical response. So, an activity that I like to play a lot with my kids called Pinocchio. So, it goes like this maybe you already know it, uh, but I say, okay, everybody, hands up on your eyes. So children, what they do is that they touch the ears and then I ask them, oh, are these the eyes? No, where are the eyes? Pay attention. Okay, everybody, hands up. On your head. Up, mouth. Okay. And this activity is called Pinocchio because I tell my students, if I do it wrong, then you have to tell me, Pinocchio. That means that I'm lying. So they will have to tell me, is this a mouse? No, it's a mouse. So um, they, 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 you get the attention of them again because they're going to be listening to what you are um, saying and, and not what you are doing, okay? So these kind of activities, CPR, like Simon says, um, other activities, um, that 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 maybe uh, you can find um, in the internet for for TPR can be very useful because they help gain attention again. So in between activities, for example, after daily routine, they were sitting down or maybe they were dancing and that. Okay, now sit down. Oh, they were they were very hyper. Now relax. Okay, let's breathe. Ah, oh, okay, again. Oh, try to, to, to touch the ceiling. Wow. So, are you ready? Yes, let's start again. 
you can also use your puppet to, to sing, to do TPR. They will love that. So maintain the flow, maintain the flow so they don't get tired and you don't get tired either. And well, the, 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 and the last thing that super important is to have fun and enjoy. If you plan a class where you are having fun, the, your children will have fun too. So I really wish you the best, the best, and I hope that um, these tips uh, were very useful, that you can really uh, get some ideas to apply directly in your classroom, and that, um, that, uh, that you can improve your, your teaching techniques. I wish you the best. The best of life is in your hands and are the kids. So thank you. Bye bye. Hi, Lorena. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I sure I can. Okay. So um, a big thank you to you. And um, um, I'm, I'm sure Lorena is happy to stay for a few minutes and answer a, a couple of questions. Before we do that, um, on behalf of Macmillan Education, I want to thank you all for spending this hour with us. Um, as we saw at the beginning, I think some of you are up um, very early in the morning or stayed there up very late at night to join us and um, hundreds of you online. So we really appreciate you taking the time. And um, as this is the last webinar in a very long series, I just want to thank all of you who've attended um, two, three, or even all of our, our webinars. Again, a, a, a big thank you. And a thank you from me to the team at Macmillan, to Kasia, to Sonali, to Piotr, everyone who helps put these um, together. I've seen lots of questions about the certificate. Here is your beautiful um, advancing learning certificate. Um, if you are following us on Click Webinar, we will send that directly to your email, so you don't need to do anything. Unfortunately, if you're on Facebook, we don't have your details, but um, we'll be launching a new webinar campaign um, just after the summer. And so um, for those webinars, just make sure you join us um, through the Macmillan Education webinar page, and you will get your um, certificate um, automatically. And um, this webinar has been recorded. All of our webinars have been recorded, and you can view those recordings on our YouTube channel. So we're going to take a break for a couple of months, so you can use that time to check up on all of those webinars that you um, um, missed. So, um, um, Lorena, thank you so much. Um, a very lively, interesting um, session. And I've been following the chat box and lots of um, compliments from the teachers and lots of great ideas. Anybody online have a question for Lorena? You can type it in the uh, chat box. Lots of people saying thank you. And of course, as usual, I've forgotten to put my glasses on. So let's see if I can actually read what you've put in the chat box. So we've got a few questions there. Um, what's your advice if you've got um, particularly hyperactive children um, in the classroom? Yeah, um, I think that for them, you you have to to give them like certain goals um, because they are so hyper that you have to give them uh, short activities and certain goals. For example, okay, you're going to do this very short activity and you're going to get to do this. Maybe they're not going to get to do the whole activity as the other students, but you will have to adapt it. So the because um, they're so hyper that maybe they cannot concentrate a lot. So you will have just to adapt the activity for them and um, and give them certain goals that they can really reach. Because if they, they start feeling that they are successful, um, they, they, I mean, they, so for, um, for hyper kids, I would say that. Just adapt your activity so they can really get to the objective, but um, maybe in a different way or maybe shorter, okay? For them, I would say that. 
Okay. We have quite a few questions coming through. What about in your classroom, Lorena? What rules do you have in your classroom? Well, um, it's always don't push or um, raise your hand when you want to talk or tell me when you want to go to the bathroom, just don't leave outside. You cannot go out of the classroom without my permission because some of them like to escape. Um, uh, be kind. Uh, if, if you do something wrong, we have to say I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, certain rules like that of good behavior. Um, and what else? Um, when you finish, for example, your work, you have to clean up your table. You have to put all your, the trash that you use in the waste basket. Very simple rules that children can do that also are like um, things that they can do uh, or that they, they, they can or, or are learning from home too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we had a question about hyperactive kids. What about if you've got a very quiet group, if, if the children are very shy and introverted, any any tips? Well, um, as I was telling you, sometimes they are shy because they are afraid of talking or because um, they hear you speaking differently, so they really don't understand and they feel scared. So the tip here is just to choose the puppet, um, try to to um, make them feel they're at home um, with uh, activities they, they might like, maybe some games, uh, maybe ask them to, to dance with you or something like that. Um, the thing is that um, when we are uh, working with little kids, uh, first of all, we have to gain their confidence. So if they um, are too shy, it's because they are not that confident uh, to, to, to speak or to act or to dance and that. Maybe just if, if, if there are some kids that don't want to do it, maybe um, the puppet can go and invite them to stand up, or maybe they can stand up and holding the puppet, or maybe you can stand up and dance with them. And little by little, you can start including them in, in, with everybody in the group. And little by little, they, they also start enjoying the class. Good. That was like me, Lorena. I was a very shy, quiet child. Um, <laughs> something went wrong. Yeah, I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah, like Pao, the, the, the little girl that I was telling you at the beginning, yeah. she was very shy and she never talked to me until I started using the puppet, for example, no? So that, that's the first time I, I got to hear her voice um, because she, she, she was like that. She never wanted to speak. She never wanted to dance or to do anything. She was too shy. Um, but really, the puppets do magic with the children. We have a, we have a new pre-primary course out of the moment written by Carol Reed called Mimi's Wheel. And the, the main character there is a a meerkat called Mimi, and we have um, we've designed a puppet, especially for That's teachers nice. um, to use, and I think it's a, a, a great tool. So, um, Lorraine, I think you've done um, a, a brilliant job. We've reached the end of the hour um, now. <laughs>